Welcome to Lesson 4 of Module 7 on ERD Rules and Problem Solving. I'm going to start with an important reflective question about detecting and resolving diagram errors. Why do you not need to understand the meaning of an ERD to detect diagram errors, but usually need to understand business requirements to resolve diagram errors? This question emphasizes the difference between detection and resolution of diagram errors. Lesson 4 continues basic problem solving skills begun in Lesson 3. I encourage you to work these problems before viewing this lesson. Working the problems can help you integrate the details of the lessons in Modules 6 and 7 and overcome the inertia of passive learning. The highlights of several problems will be covered in this lesson. You can find details in a document on the class website. The major objective of this lesson is to work problems to gain confidence with the ERD notation and a drawing tool such as the ER Assistant. You should be able to work problems with many, many relationships and associative entity types as well as detect diagram errors. You should preferably use a drawing tool supporting the crow's foot notation shown in modules 6 and 7. The ER Assistant supports the ERD notation and provides a convenient feature to check an ERD for diagram errors. For review, let's begin with the solution to problem 2 shown at the end of lesson 3. We will build on this solution in lesson 4. Problem 1 involved the customer and order entity types in the places relationship. Problem 2 involved the addition of the employee entity type along with the takes and manages relationships. Note that the manager's relationship is self-referencing to represent an organization chart. You should extend the ERD from problem two with a product entity type and a many-to-many -many relationship between product and order. For the product entity type, you should add attributes for prod number, that's the primary key, prod name, prod quantity on hand, prod price, and prod next ship date. For the many-to-many -many relationship, you should add an attribute for the order quantity. You should choose an appropriate relationship name using your common knowledge of connections between products and orders. You should then define minimum cardinalities so that an order is optional to a product and a product is mandatory to an order. This diagram shows the solution for problem three. Most of the solution follows directly from the problem narrative, including the contains many-to-many -many relationship with the QTY or quantity attribute. The specification, order is optional to a product, is shown by the minimal cardinality symbol of a circle near the order entity type in the contains relationship. Likewise, the specification, product is mandatory to an order, is shown by the perpendicular cardinality symbol near the product entity type in the contains relationship. For data types, Product number should be integer, product name should be varchar, product quantity hand should be integer, product price should be fixed decimal, that's a decimal data type, with two digits to the right of the decimal point, and product next ship date should be date or date time. In this problem, you should revise the ERD from problem four by transforming the many-to-many -many relationship into an associative entity type and two identifying one-to-many relationships. This ERD shows the solution for problem four. The solution follows directly from the equivalence rule between many-to-many -many relationships and associative entity types. The contains relationship has been transformed into the product or associative entity type in two one-to-many identifying relationships, contains and used in. The QTY or quantity attribute is part of the product or entity type. In the transformation, you need to provide names for the identifying relationships. The name for the associative entity type can be a noun instead of a verb used for the many-to-many -many relationship. For each diagram error in this ERD, you should identify the consistency rule violated and suggest possible resolutions of the error. The ERD has generic names, such as Entity2, so that you will concentrate on finding diagram errors rather than focusing on the meaning of the diagram. The ERD contains six diagram errors as noted in this diagram. The primary key rule violation is simple to identify 
by the missing column with an underline in Entity 2. The other rule violations are more difficult to identify and explain. I encourage you to explain each rule violation without reviewing the solution. After you try to explain each diagram error, you should review the explanation in the solution document. Now, let's wrap up Lesson 4 about problem solving using the ERD notation. This lesson covered the highlights of the problems. You can see complete details in the website document. The major objective of working these problems is to gain confidence creating simple ERDs using an ERD drawing tool. Now let's return to the opening question about detection and resolution of diagram errors. Detecting diagram errors involves complete and consistent usage of symbols, not really the appropriateness of the symbols to a business situation. Detecting diagram errors is similar to syntax checking of computer languages performed by compilers. While it is possible to generate possible resolutions of a diagram error without knowledge of business requirements, Understanding business requirements is necessary to determine the most appropriate resolution for a diagram error. Lesson 4 concludes Module 7. Modules 8 and 9 emphasize analysis of business requirements in evaluation of alternative designs, higher level reasoning skills than covered in Modules 6 and 7. The concepts and skills emphasized in Modules 6 and 7 are a prerequisite to the concept and skills emphasized in Modules 8 and 9. You need to have confidence about precisely using ERD notation without diagram errors before developing higher level reasoning skills to develop ERDs that satisfy business data requirements.